It is the 4th of the 6th, 2013. This is a video testimonial to remind myself next time I'm even thinking about taking the Greyhound bus. Me and my brother and another friend were uh, spent a couple weeks on the Appalachian Trail in northern Georgia. Now I went to take the bus back home, the Greyhound bus, out of Gainesville, Georgia. Uh, we got dropped off at the bus station and I walked the four blocks from the bus station to the Martin Luther King address at the Greyhound station. Only to find the sign's been ripped off the ceiling and the, the station was closed uh, with a note written in Sharpie taped to the window uh, explaining directions to the new location of the Greyhound station in uh, Gainesville, Georgia. So me and my brother walked the block up and uh, we ate at the Burger King. Later the locals told me the name for that is the Murder King on uh, a busy intersection in Gainesville. So I walked down to the bus stop at 2 o'clock in the afternoon uh, knowing my bus wasn't due to arrive till 9 p.m. That's just when my shuttle uh, arrived and we got dropped off. So I was forced to wait uh, at the bus stop for eight hours. It was located at a gas station, a uh, busy intersection. There is, uh, you know how Greyhound is, it's not in the best neighborhood at all, uh, right across the street. Um, there I sat for eight hours on a little um, garden bench with a tape sign on it it's for uh, Greyhound users only and a little this the Greyhound bus stop um, sign on the window and that was it. Uh, the clerk had no idea what was going on uh, with the Greyhound situation uh, nor did she care to uh, so she wasn't very helpful as far as um, what we can do. Being a Saturday I tried to call Greyhound customer service, only open Monday through Friday. Um, so I sat there, and I couldn't tell you how many people came up and asked me for cigarettes, or money, or uh, something else as far as trying to test me whether I'm, you know, <laughs> robbable or not. Exactly, that's the impression I got. I'm a tattoo artist, I've worked liquor stores for years and years. Um, you could just spot people a mile away. I'm saying 95% of the people that were uh, customers at the gas station were, were friendly, uh, small talk. Um, they were just amazed that the bus station was stopped there and um, <clears throat> went on. You know, everybody was just like, why is the bus station here? Well, apparently, according to the store clerk, uh, the owner of the, the last property that held the bus station um, got so sick of the homeless people hanging out there and going to the bathroom everywhere and harassing the customers all the time, he kicked Greyhound out and they were forced to relocate at this gas station. Uh, first day there, I was, and I sat there. Um, when the bus, the 545 bus arrived and confirmed, um, we were told that we had to give the cash to the bus driver uh, to get on the bus to go to Atlanta and then take care of the tickets kind of thing from there. Um, when the bus did arrive an hour late after dark, it was 10 p.m. when the bus finally arrived. Now the gas station closes at like a quarter to midnight or so, so um, there's no staying over and there's no real security there. Uh, the bus literally got swarmed um, by people wanting rides, wanting money, wanting cigarettes, and uh, people on the bus that we were allowed, the bus drivers, like, get on the bus, we'll take care of it the next stop. So uh, people were literally calling their friends and family on the phone making sure they got it out, out of that parking lot. Okay, it's that crazy in uh, Gainesville, Georgia. Needless to say, uh, we stopped at the next stop and uh, the driver let us out and I had a prepaid ticket and all that so everything was taken care of uh, quick and easy. Uh, made it to Atlanta. Um, probably about 30 gang members patrolling around the outskirts of the, the Atlanta Greyhound bus station uh, trying to lure people out from one way or another. A young couple was uh, attempted, they attempted to lure them out and I told them you better stay in the station. Uh, the buses were running late of course but that's okay. The normal insanity that is a major terminal hub of Greyhound to be expected. Um, made the bus to uh, where to get off in Nashville and uh, Nashville stations, very clean, very tidy. They are on the spot. Um, 
had two security officers there who were very, very um, making sure that anybody at the Greyhound terminal was safe and things were going on. Uh, they had a private smoking section for the smoking behind, I mean, inside the complex. As long as you, you know, ran across the street and jumped in a cab, you were pretty good in Nashville. Um, pleasant stay there. Now, the bus from Nashville uh, to St. Louis was also the 6344 bus that the video is behind here. I'll start playing that while I'm testimonial. Um, but that's the guy who was doing paperwork or whatnot from St. Louis to uh, Kansas City. Anyway, the guy in St. Louis, the bus driver, a different driver than the one in the video here, uh, made it very clear and simple. He was in charge. I called him Mr. Ego, and uh, he made several announcements saying the slightest infractions and you're off my bus kind of thing. And uh, all brakes were cut in half. All the stretch brakes, the 20 minute brakes that we were designed, and we say 10 minute brakes were on and off, guys, because he's had to make up time. And apparently he's a busy guy and he puts up with a lot of bull and I, and I got to respect that as a bus driver. Um, but <laughs> there's definitely no nonsense, zero tolerance on the Greyhound. Um, so we made it to St. Louis uh, where there was a slight layover. And um, immediately jumped on, basically they pulled the same bus I just got off of, um, swept it out real quick and then pulled back in as a second bus, an overflow bus to Kansas City. And, uh, of course, the bus is running late. Um, the bus driver um, refused to let us off. He completely canceled the stretch brake. Uh, you know, I would have been down with cutting it in half um, to make the schedule run because he had some transfers that he had to get there before that other bus left. Otherwise, these people would be stuck for, you know, up to eight, ten hours for the next bus to arrive. And uh, this is the driver who was uh, doing paperwork. Um, while he was driving down the interstate. Um, the driver before him had his coats racked off where he was completely concealed from the passengers and uh, you couldn't really tell what he was doing up there. Um, from uh, So we finally arrived in Kansas City and uh, about an hour, hour and a half layover, no big deal. Uh, there was one guy running around bumming cigarettes and money and uh, I did witness the employees chase him off the property. Thank you very much. I was about to say something when uh, one of the custodian guys chased him out. Um, good, uh, you know, nice bus terminal, uh, fairly safe. Uh, they got everything backed off so you're away from everybody kind of thing. And again, not in the best of neighborhoods. Uh, made the bus to Des Moines, got off, got my stuff. Uh, I had a friend waiting there at the terminal. I am from Des Moines. Uh, it's my hometown, and uh, <clears throat> I just threw my bag in the back, and we were out of there. And uh, that's basically my Greyhound experience. Now, I want to warn people, uh, especially Appalachian Trail hikers, uh, people with backpacks and pockets full of cash because they got to pay that bus driver, um, please avoid Gainesville, Georgia, until they get that situation under control. It's a very, very, very dangerous situation um, right across the street from some projects, and... Um, I had about 12, 14 gentlemen um, staring me down for about eight hours until that bus showed up. And uh, so I can only imagine somebody, uh, you know, five foot nine and 150 pounds. I'm 6'2 and 240, and I'm not fat. So be warned, and uh, that's my experience. And a uh, little note to myself never take the Greyhound again. Enjoy what you can.